In this video, we will compare how local and global load balancing works in FIBIP and AWS ELB. For FIBIP, we will first review some concepts and terminologies in both Local Traffic Manager or LTM and DNS. This is formerly known as GTM or Global Traffic Manager. Then we will discuss the configuration we did from this videos aws networking part one and part two these are aws elb or elastic load balancer and aws auto scaling group concepts are quite similar just minor difference this would be the best video if you are already familiar with fi big ip and want to understand how application load balancing works in aws for those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I am the Cloud and Data Center. Rock star. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia tutorials in Cloud and Data Center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Let's have a little review on F5 Big IP with LTM or Local Traffic Manager, how it works. LTM is the local load balancing feature of FI Big IP, and it's very simple. First, we have this topology. We have this external network 10.10.0.0/16, and this network is also connected to the client. And we have this internal network 172.16.0.0/16. This network is connected to the servers. The server's IP address are 172.16, 20.1, 20.2, and 20.3. Next, we need to understand these terminologies. When we say nodes, these are the IP addresses of the servers. Okay, Again, IP addresses only. If we add port of this application running on our servers, this is now called pool members, or sometimes we just call it members. Basically, members are nodes plus ports. These members are added in pools. You don't configure members or pool members outside the pool. Pools are basically containers of pool members. Last, we have what we call the virtual servers. These are the listeners. Clients contacts or send requests to the virtual servers, not directly to the pool members or the nodes. Virtual servers consist of IP address plus port. To enable load balancing, we need to associate a pool to that virtual server. All right, so here's how the load balancing really works. Client sends HTTP request to the virtual server. In our case, the virtual server is HTTP underscore VS with an IP address of 10.10.0.100 listening on TCP port 80. The virtual server will process the request. And since there is a pool, our pool is HTTP underscore, uh, excuse me, HTTP underscore pool. This pool is associated to our virtual server. It will then forward the request to those pool members that are added to that pool. In our first request, our FI Big IP forwards the traffic to the first pool member with an IP address of 172.16.20.1. The first pool member will respond back to the Big IP, and the Big IP sends the respond back to the client. Now, our second request to HTTP underscore VS well, it's the same. We do the processing of the traffic. This is done by the virtual server. But now it forwards to the second pool member 
with an IP address of 172.16.20.2. There's various types of load balancing. Um, these are what we call load balancing method. But one of the most common load balancing method is round robin, where FI Big IP distributes the requests evenly to all pool members. So that is the basic of FI Big IP load balancing using LTM or local traffic manager. Now, let's talk about global load balancing with DNS or formerly known as GTM or global traffic manager. We will skip the LDNS process as well as the query to the root name server. So this is the same query, but now it's sent to the zurian.com name server. In this example, this name server is F5 Big IP DNS. And this responds with an A record for the destination zurian.com. Now the A record, this is the IP address. In this example, the IP address that will be responded to our client is 11.11.11.100. The big IP may send either 11.11.11.11.100 or it can also be 22.22.22.200 to the client. Um, the client, this is what made the request. Now, how do we know which IP address or A record that will send back to the client, well, this depends on the global load balancing feature that is enabled. Again, there are also different load balancing methods. The client connects to the IP address 11.11.11.100, and this IP address is residing on the first data center. Now, since 11.11.11.100 is the IP address of the virtual server of the first big IP LTM. It forwards the request to one of the pool member through the use of local load balancing. Now, we have the second request. This is the same, but this time, the big IP local traffic manager or LTM on the same data center, the first data center, is now gonna forward the traffic to the second pool member. Now, this is how the global load balancing really works. The client sends query to the name server, but this time, the A record is different. It's not 11.11 .11 anymore. It's now 22.22.22.200, which is the IP address residing on the second data center. The client connects to that IP address, which is the virtual server, 22.22.22.200, listening on port 80. Again, this is residing on the second data center. Now, since the IP address 22.22.22.200, listening on port 80, is the virtual server of the big IP LTM in data center two, it forwards the request to one of the pool members. In this example, it forwarded to the first server or the first member. Then the second request, it's the same, but this time the big IP LTM on the second data center forwards the HTTP traffic to the second pool member. Now, if you want to understand more F5 big IP and load balancing, check this out. Open a web browser and type www.zurian.com. This will take you to the Zurian website. Click training and this will redirect you to the training webpage. Here you will see various courses. You can filter F5 courses and now only F5 related courses are displayed, such as F5 101 exam preparation, F5 201 exam preparation, and building F5 Big IP Lab for free. Now, let's talk about Amazon Web Services ELB or Elastic Load Balancer. And we will compare this with F5 Big IP, both LTM and DNS. In our AWS example, uh, in part one and part two of AWS networking videos, everything is in AWS cloud. All right, so first, EC2 or the Elastic Compute 2, these are the instances and it's already created. When we say instances, these are the servers or virtual machines 
residing in AWS Cloud. All right, so first thing we did is we created ALB or Application Load Balancer. This is also an ELB or Elastic Load Balancing because we have uh, three types. Okay, so Application Load Balancer, we named this Web App ELB. All right, so um, in our topology, that's our load balancer. Then we associated VPC or Virtual Private Cloud. We name our VPC Lab VPC with a CIDR of 10.0.0.0/16. We also configure the mapping. Now the mapping, these are availability zones. In our example, we have two availability zones, or sometimes we call this AZ. So our first availability zone is US-West-2A, and it also have a public subnet 10.0.0.0/24. Our second availability zone is named US-West-2B. Also, there's a dedicated subnet 10.0.2.0/24. Um, availability zone for those who are not familiar is a distinct location within an AWS region and an availability zone may have one or more physical data centers. So just imagine we have two availability zone and these are two data centers in the same region. Okay. Uh, we also created what we call security group. Sometimes we call this SG. Now, security group um, is an ACL, but instance level, okay? So this is a little different than NACL because the NACL is network level, okay? Now, our SG or our security group, we named this load balancer-SG. Now, when we created our load balancer SG or our security group, we just simply allowed all incoming HTTP traffic. Now. Here is more interesting part of our configuration, the listener and routing. The listener is analogous to virtual server, but we don't define IP address. In FI Big IP, the virtual server is IP address plus port. Okay, that is the listener. And then we do some configuration, um, including the association of pool. But again, the virtual server is IP address plus port. The listener here in our ELP is just the port. This is the internet facing port. The IP address and the domain name is automatically created for us, but we can change this later. Also under listener and routing, we added what we called target groups. We name our target group as lab-app-target-group. Now, target group is analogous to pools where we define those target servers. Now, the target servers are called here in our ELB. The target servers are called register targets. And this is analogous to pool members. Okay, so here's the difference. In FIB IP, we just add an IP address plus port of the server, okay? This is how we configure or we, how we add the pool members. And uh, this is under pool configuration. Here in AWS, we select an instance that is already provisioned. IP address are automatically assigned based on the public subnet in an availability zone. What we defined is are just ports. In this example, this instance or this target is listening on TCP port 80. Once the application load balancer has been created, it automatically creates a domain name. And this domain name is what our client sends HTTP request. The client contacts this domain name. And um, this domain name also listens to TCP port 80. This is defined in our listener configuration. Now the ELB process the request and forwards the traffic to that one target. Because we in this configuration, this topology, we only have one target. 
Now the target responds back and ELB responds to the client. The later part of our video, this is part two, we enabled AWS Auto Scaling Group. This is when it automatically provisions new targets. And how did it happen? We use stress feature. And this is a stress test. The server will receive high load and this will trigger to scale, meaning it adds more registered targets. And this is based on the policy we configured. So we added three more servers in our target group. These registered targets are provisioned in two different availability zones. In our example, there are two targets in availability zone US-West-2A and another two targets to US-West-2B. And all targets are listening to TCP port 80. When the client sends requests to our web application, the ELB will load balance to all four servers slash targets. And that target may be in the first availability zone or that target may be also in the second availability zone. In our testing from the web application, it identifies which availability zone is the target residing. And we saw it changing from the first availability zone to the second availability zone and vice versa. I hope you have learned something and had fun comparing F5 Big IP and AWS ELB or the Elastic Load Balancer. Let me know if this is something that you are interested in so I can create more cloud networking or AWS application load balancing related videos. If you are planning to switch from network engineer to cloud network engineer, I have this video ready for you. So, what do you think is better, FIB IP or AWS ELB?